Welcome to this video. Now this is the last video of S7 1200 controller example. In this video we will see how we can bypass a magnetic door switch of S7 10 controller via a PLC output. So we're gonna send another output from S7 1200 PLC which will be used as a virtual non-safety input to bypass one of our sensors. In this example we'll use magnetic door switch. How we can do that? This is also possible very easily in Ascension SC10 controller. So here, this is our last program. We want to bypass this sensor. So in this case, we need to use a bypass block. So which I want to put here. So let me just move this block from here to here just by drag and drop, super easy. Now I will take an input here and I will take bypass block. This is in my function block. This bypass block will bypass the operation of magnetic switch in such a way you can ignore the operation of the switch. Maybe sometime you need to bypass some safety sensors, could be any reason. This is just to see how you can do that, but please do that on your own risk. So this bypass block has a name, it's like B1, you can, already, you can also change it if you like, and then you have a bypass time limit. So we can change the time limit, let's say just for understanding I will change it to one minute so one minute is a range I can bypass the sensor and then it will automatically be active okay and this is an this is an option output turns off and both inputs are on so this you can check or uncheck it's totally up to you I let it be by default click OK and then you have a bypass block now this bypass block has two inputs IN and BP IN is the input you want to bypass, BP is the signal you need to bypass this input. Very simple. So magnetic switch we want to bypass, so I will bring this bottom here and I will delete this one. So I will bring this here, so this is going to be bypassed. Now we need a signal to bypass the sensor. Okay, if this is making it confusing, I can bring this down here and a little bit here just to make it look not so messed up, but it's already let me just rearrange it. Yeah, now it's better. So this input needs another signal for bypassing. So we need to have an extra input. This you can do by going to plus here. And again, I want to have an input. In this case, I will use virtual mute available. This is the input you need for bypassing. Click on this one and index is one. That is okay because zero we are already using. Click okay and you have another input. This I can connect easily to my bypass input. And after that, the output of this bypass block, I can give back to the AND gate. Very easy. So once you do that, you will see in industrial ethernet, and if you go to virtual non-safety input, your input VME1 is automatically linked here. Okay, and this is the input. We will get the signal of this input from the PLC output, all right? What could be this output? Very easy. If you have seen the last video, if I go to device and network again on my banner, you can see that first output which we used in the last video was Q64.0, second is Q64.1. Very simple. So if I show you my banner tags again, I have used an output Q64.1, which is my PLC bypass magnetic switch. So if this is true, this will send the signal to my controller in my functional block and this will bypass my magnetic switch. Okay, let's have a look. So all we have to do is download this program. So I'll write this configuration, I will save it, save it as my second project, replacing it, putting the password, same process like last time, continue, and confirming my circuit. Everything looks good, close don't want to change the password and close. Now I have to just restart my controller. This is necessary every time we make a program download. Okay, now everything looks great. Let's go to live mode. And now you can see that this switch is active, door switch is active, some problem, okay. And at the moment, manual reset is required for these to work because if I see my factory IO, my e-stop is also not pressed. Looks great. So I will press the switch and my outputs are reset. So our task is to bypass this input. Let's see if we don't bypass, 
This is going to break the circuit, like before, we knew that. Reset it again. All right, now to bypass this magnetic switch, I need to actuate this one. So this actually I'm doing via selector switch, which is this one. So this is giving a signal to my PLC. Let's have a look. I bring that here and here. So if I turn it on, you can see that this is true and this has bypassed the input. And because we have seen when both the inputs are true, it will trigger the circuit. So that's why it turned off R1. So let me, what I have to do now is I will bring this out, the sensor, and bring it back and bypass again. And now you have seen that this has bypassed and my reset required is true and I can reset the circuit. Outputs are true. So this will start my operation here. So my robot start working. Now this switch is out of my safety circuit and my operation is working. But this will only work until one minute. This was the limit which we set. So we wait for a minute and we will notice this will stop bypassing and then it will look for the switch to be active again. So we just wait one minute. <laughs> I can maybe fast forward this video until it gets active again. Here we go. After one minute, it has turned off my block. And now in this case, what I need to do is I can reset my by bypass, bring it back to false and bring back my magnetic switch because my bypass time limit is gone. And now you can see reset operation is acquired reset and the operation starts again. Okay, so this was how easy it is to bypass your safety inputs. Once again, if you really want to bypass without making both true, just put it off and now you can bypass the input and now reset the circuit. Very easy. All right, so this was about how you can bypass the safety inputs of SC10 controller using PLC output, which act as virtual non-safety input. I hope this is interesting. Using this signal, you can bypass any sensors. You can define three different inputs for bypassing three different safety sensors, but please do that on your own risk. Talk to the safety guys in your company and make sure you design the safety circuit with professionals before bypassing the safety inputs, because this could also be a dangerous situation. All right. Thank you for watching this video. In the next video, we will see another interesting application via Modbus. So we're going to use a Node-RED and make a dashboard to see the status of our inputs and also to simulate e-stop and bypass via a dashboard, via an HMI on Node-RED. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.